Welcome to Greg, Myron, and Joe's Colorado BDR adventure on August 18th, 2017. We are coming from uh, the Front Range, Fort Collins and Boulder. On Friday, we rented a U-Haul and did a one-way trip to Cortez, Colorado, where we dropped off the U-Haul, checked in a hotel, and rode down to the Four Corners and back. Uh, it was about 40 miles. Uh, then on our official day one, we started off from Cortez to Telluride. Pretty easy first day, uh, no really rough terrain, but beautiful landscapes. Uh, we made it into Telluride by the evening. Uh, the Mushroom Festival, the annual Mushroom Festival was going on. Uh, just as we arrived, it was just sort of closing up the parade. And we had some dinner in Telluride and then headed out back to the campground. Uh, the first night we stayed in Alta Lakes was a very busy campground. We had to climb up to the top of this little hill to find a spot that wasn't already taken and we didn't have any reservations. Uh, besides the diesel generators going all night, uh, it was a pretty nice place to stay. Then on the second day, we started out from Telluride uh, to Lake City. This was by far the most difficult day. Uh, Ofer Pass was just uh, very difficult on a big bike. Hindsight, hitting Ulfer Pass on a Saturday was really rough due to all of the car traffic. It really uh, added an extra level of um, difficulty that wouldn't have, wouldn't have been there if we just went on a less busy day. Uh, that being said, Ulfer Pass had just these very large rocks that were completely uh, slippery. Uh, they were loose. It was hard to get traction, and once you got stopped, it was very difficult to get started again. Uh, having a 1200 uh, GS, that made it even worse. Um, we were in the hot sun, and it was just uh, a real struggle to get the bike started again uh, once you took a tumble. Um, I think I probably fell a few times on this trail. There's me going over the very first time on the trip. Uh, bark busters and the Tortec uh, cases really, um, really helped. Uh, but as you can see, I had a little oil backup. Uh, the cylinder guards and the lower crash bars on the GS were an absolute must on here. Even with both of those, I still managed to put a little tiny dent in my cylinder guard or in my cylinder casing itself. Um, got back, started there, and uh, went past these two. Uh, in this Jeep here, which were stuck, they had to actually turn around. Um, they probably could have made it up. Uh, people with, with even lesser tires made it up, uh, but they ended up turning around. Uh, got stuck right here for quite a while. Had to wait for Greg to come back down and push. Um, just could not get any traction to get moving. Uh, and we were tried backing up and moving out, but everywhere it was just tons of big, loose rock. Two steps forward, one step back. I am really trying to not go off the edge there, and I feel like the, everyone's just pushing this way to the right. We're only pushing forward. I'd rather drop the bike to the left and let it fall on the ground.
finally got it out of that tough spot. Uh, got up to a little flat area, was able to park. Uh, then Myron started coming up in his 690 and just lost his line right there and boom, went over. It was right in that same spot. That spot had a huge pothole to the right. Um, and it was just really difficult on these bigger bikes with all the weight on. All right. That guy had his uh, dog in the passenger seat and his wife running up behind trying to work out uh, last night's partying off apparently. Uh, we finally got some uh, room to go by letting a bunch of cars pass and really tried to make as much progress as we could. Uh, there was really only enough room for one car uh, and so you really had to get as far as you could and then get to a good stopping spot because these cars there was no real rhyme or reason they weren't they weren't stopping uh and letting people pass or vice versa it was really uh just a madhouse of cars coming from up from behind you and cars coming down from the top These rocks were just so big, loose, really hard to manage on, on this big bike. Uh, at this point, after the bike had fell over a few times, uh, the dash stopped registering any sort of gears, so I couldn't see uh, what gear I was in. Not a huge deal, really only in first gear, uh, first and second, but uh, the dash stopped registering gears, the uh, hill control assist uh, was not functioning at this point. Uh, I thought I really kind of messed up the bike, uh, but just after another about five minutes of riding, uh, everything just appeared back. The gear stuff started showing up on the dash and the hill assist came back into play. So I'm not sure what happened there, but the bike definitely had a little bit of a, you know, a brain fart. Um, this is just making it right up near the top, uh, two cars blocking any way through, uh, just conveniently. Um, going down the other side of Ofer Pass was like riding on the I-70. It was a uh, road just like this basically the whole way, um, barely any sort of rocks or hills. It was a really smooth ride uh, getting to the other passes. Greg's solution to just about everything, give it more gas, uh, seemed to work out in that situation. Right after that, we are passing through Ironton, a lot of old mining buildings. Really makes you wonder what it might have been like when that uh, mines were, were fully operational. Right after that, we started going through Corkscrew. Corkscrew was looked really fun on a 300. Uh, was still really fun on these big bikes, lots of grip. I think everybody enjoyed uh, Corkscrew Pass. Now I'm not exactly sure which pass this one was, but it was coming right on the other side of Corkscrew and I just remember all the switchbacks being uh, really sandy with a mix of those big rocks. So coming down you really had to take your time making the turns.
Coming down through Hurricane Pass, you encounter what are thousands and thousands of sheep and a small tent with a wood burning stove inside where the sheep herder lives and the sheep are all over the place. They, you definitely need to honk your horn to get them off the road. Uh, we stopped, take a few pictures. Uh, no one was attacked, so that was good. So start going up this hill and for some reason I lose my line on the right and head into this giant pit of rocks in the center. I end up paying for it. I try to come left here and when I try to turn up the hill, uh, my back tire slid out and uh, I lost it. Uh, I had to have Greg and Myron come back down and help hold the bike while I got on it. On the hill, the angle was just so steep that I couldn't reach my leg over the bike without someone holding it and I couldn't use a kickstand. Uh, meanwhile, Myron came by and took a tumble himself and rolled down the hill a few times. Come up here, finally get restarted and I was just, you know, riding a bucking bronco all the way up the hill. It was not pretty. That was really representative of today's riding. Just rocky, slick rock, loose rock, and a lot of falling over. The big bike definitely proved to be uh, quite more of a challenge than I really expected. Being my first time riding this thing off-road, uh, it really had a different uh, profile of how it reacted to bumps and everything than my KTM 300 XCW. At the end of the day, we ended up uh, camping on the side uh, of the road in a disbursement camping area. We had a creek right next to us. It was really beautiful, uh, really peaceful. Then we headed from uh, Lake City to Buena Vista the next day. Encountered this couple riding on this KTM 1190R. Uh, they were making s just short work of all of the bumpiest roads. It was uh, quite impressive. At this point of the day, we decide to head up to Taylor Lake. It's kind of out of the way now since Cottonwood Pass was officially closed for construction. But we decided to just go up there and check it out. Greg always wanted to see what Taylor Lakes was all about. Instead of taking the official BDR reroute, we de first decided to go check out Tin Cup Pass. If we could get over Tin Cup Pass, we could take a little bit more adventurous way to Buena Vista. So on our way up to Tin Cup Pass, we were told we would have to actually ride through a lake. That was a guy at the Pitkin gas station, and we really didn't understand what he meant by riding through a lake. But as it turns out, the path to the base of Tin Cup Pass is alongside this lake. And if this lake is high enough, it would cover the whole uh, road here and you'd actually have to drive through the lake to get to the base of Tinkup Pass. Uh, everyone at Pitkin was also concerned about taking these big bikes on Tinkup Pass and that it was pretty uh, technical. Uh, we decided to just get to the base and check it out. Uh, we get to the base and these three KTM dirt bikes are on their way down. One of the uh, dirt bikes gets stuck um, and we flag this other guy down that just comes up right here. Um, and kind of ask him about Tin Cup Pass, and he's really concerned. There are quite a few really hairy obstacles up on Tin Cup Pass uh, that they had some trouble with. Uh, so ultimately, we decided that Tin Cup Pass would be too difficult uh, for at least me on the 1200 uh, for today, and we decided to head back and just make our way through the official BDR reroute. On our way back, we stopped again at uh, the Pitkin gas station. Uh, really nice uh, gas station. The owner let us uh, dump all our garbage uh, and everything out that we had and kind of get back uh, square. Um, they do have a burger hot dog joint uh, 
uh, grill that's right to the right side. So we stopped there and uh, had a really quick dinner and just made sure we had our, our route to Buena Vista mapped out. Um, we hustled on back and uh, finally made it uh, to Monarch and got back on the road and drove quite a bit on the road uh, all the way up to Buena Vista and we made it there. We were staying in the front yard of someone that Myron knew. Uh, we were just going to throw our tents down in their front yard uh, and stay right in the downtown Buena Vista. Lots of cows all over this, uh, this road back. Uh, definitely leaving us some big presence on the road to, to smell and uh, just taking their sweet time uh, getting off the road as well. Getting dark and just tons of deer on the side of the, on these roads. If you're traveling on these roads, uh, just make sure you really pay attention to uh, those deer getting out. This is us getting in uh, to Buena Vista at night. Right outside of Buena Vista, the very first thing you go through is kind of like this little sand park. Again, this looks like it would just be such, such fun in a small uh, dirt bike. Uh, really uh, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of, a lot of jumps. Um, all, almost all the really, really tight corners are banked. Um, it, it was really fun. It was a good way to get the day started uh, and get our confidence built back up and, uh, and have some fun on the way out. Uh, at this point of the day now, uh, we're just trying to make it to Leadville for lunchtime. A uh, good place to stop and get some gas. And uh, The train is relatively flat, some little woodsy areas here, but it never really gets too tight or difficult. A uh, little bit of mud, um, but nothing you couldn't uh, ride around or, or ride on top of uh, with relative ease. Uh, pretty fun. We encountered uh, quite a few water crossings uh, for this part of the day, uh, relatively easy if you stay to one side. Uh, there was a huge drop off here, probably like uh, six or seven or maybe eight, eight inches uh, down in this 19 inch front wheel. Really made me feel like I was just uh, falling head first. Uh, really wish the GS came with a 21 inch front wheel, uh, would make a lot of this much easier. This was a pretty big crossing, but it looked like if you just stayed to the left there, uh, you could avoid any real uh, hairy parts. Uh, see Greg just ripping right through it. Uh, not really a problem. And here's me giving it a go. Um, pretty easy. I did get some water in my boot on this one, uh, which was a pain because my foot was wet and stinky for the rest of the day. We got to Leadville, uh, we stopped for something to eat and to gas up. Uh, we ate at a Mexican restaurant, it was uh, pretty good except they only took cash, uh, which was kind of annoying. Uh, anyway, uh, right after Leadville you start heading up Hagerman Pass. Uh, Hagerman Pass was definitely challenging, uh, a lot of big uh, pointy rocks just sticking up, um, a lot of loose rock. Uh, it still wasn't as hard as Ofer Pass for sure. Um, there was a lot less traffic on this side of Hagerman Pass, although this utility truck was doing its, uh, its best to uh, not let us pass there for a long time. Um, yeah, you can see. It's got some, some boards and other repair stuff on it. They weren't messing around. Um, I tried getting up to the left here, and I just got cut up on this uh, side hill, and my back tire again slipped out and I got pushed up against the, the side here. 
uh, a little annoying, but the bike didn't go fully over. Um, there's Myron just passing me off. Um, no, he, he didn't really have a place to stop, and I was able, once he passed, just to uh, pick the bike up uh, and get back on and get going. It wasn't fully over on its side, so it was uh, relatively easy. The backside of Hagerman's Pass was probably the longest, straightest descent of any of the passes. It was just, it just seemed like it went on for hours. Um, when we decided uh, to finish for the day, we actually decided to just uh, go all the way to Eagle and grab a hotel. Uh, just outside of Gypsum, the Gypsum mine road was just uh, really, really sandy, almost fine like talcum powder, powder sand. Uh, I went in the sand here and I just took a little dump. Uh, when I came off the bike, I actually caught my foot on my center case and ripped it from the quick connect. I had to uh, uh, put the uh, camera I was carrying uh, in one of my panniers, I mashed in between all my clothes uh, and just strapped the uh, center, uh, or sorry, the tank bag uh, just to the top of one of my panniers with uh, rock straps. Um, then after we got through that, we hopped on the Colorado River Road, uh, which was a dirt packed road uh, with a, a lot of gravel, uh, just a long road. It was really nice seeing the Colorado River, but wasn't too interesting from an off-road perspective. Uh, here's me going up the right side of this hill right after Greg uh, messaged on the intercom to go to the left. Um, I got stuck right here and I uh, didn't fall over, but I, was, I started to get going again and uh, couldn't figure out what I was on. So at this point, I'm trying to just kind of figure out uh, what kind of grip I have so I could get started here. And, uh, you know, I still think I should have been able to recover from this uh, and just kind of go up and over. I don't know really what happened here, but um, after I get some traction and I uh, head right up over this rock. I feel like I, I was able to, I had a, a clear line to just go straight up that left side there. And there's just a big pile of dirt right there and, and I stalled it. Um, so when I started it back up and I tried to get some traction going, uh, again, I think a little too much gas and my back tire just spun out and I just rolled over. So GS goes down one more time for the day. Uh, I decided to just turn the bike around. Uh, it seemed a little bit easier. Uh, and they just go back down and around the left side. Uh, and now we're taking the last sort of road uh, into a uh, steamboat. And this was just a long straight country road. Uh, we had uh, some barbecue in steamboat uh, for some, uh, for a meal. Uh, and then we started to head out to the campground. So we were heading right into a storm uh, and it started coming down with some rain. As you can see on the left of the GoPro there, there's some rain. We decided to uh, wait it out uh, based on the maps we saw with the weather that there would be a gap. Uh, so we waited out uh, probably about two hours sitting on that gas station porch. They had some nice rocking chairs uh, and then eventually just headed out about 10 miles north of there uh, where we stayed in that campground. Uh, then the next day, uh, it was actually a relatively uh, quick ride uh, to the border. I seem to have lost the video for that ride, but um, we just simply rode up on country roads uh, from Steamboat to the Wyoming border. 
Uh, we extended our trip by going a little bit further. Um, since we were going back to Fort Collins, we headed in from encampment uh, down Highway 70 until we went through Red Feather Lakes uh, and North Park. And from there, we dropped down into Poudre Canyon uh, Highway. And from there, it was just uh, roads all the way back to uh, Boulder, Colorado for me. Uh, and then here's me finally pulling up probably around 9 p.m. at night and ending the trip.